Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I will introduce the final derived rule, law of excluded middle. Actually, the rule itself is pretty straightforward. If you have some proposition pi, if you or it with not of pi, is always true. Independent of whether pi is true or false, it doesn't really matter. We can conclude pi or not pi is true. We will prove this. Okay, Intuitively, we can assume pi to be true. If that is the case, we are already clear pi or not pi is true. If pi is false, we know not pi is true. Therefore, the statement is still true. Okay. If you are having some programming background, you probably know statements like this. Say, if some condition, Boolean condition, you say, go to run C statement C1, else run C2. Okay. So there is an implicit assumption here, right? Either C1 or C2 will run. The reason being that either B is true or not B is true. That's the law of excluded middle built inside. There is no third state. That is the reason for the law of the excluded middle. When we combine pi with not pi using or, the answer is always true. So how do we prove this? There is no premise. That's the reason you don't see any premise here. Only the conclusion is P or not P. We wanted to prove that is true. Yeah. So in this tool, I cannot easily type pi. That's the reason I'm using P. Suppose we assume, and I'm going to make another assumption now, just over here, P as an assumption. I'm allowed to make assumptions. Okay. Now I will be introducing the or introduction rule, which allows me to introduce anything I wanted. So I can very well introduce, say, not P. This rule is called or introduction on line number two. Okay, let's check whether we are on the right track. Yeah, there's no problem. Let's pay close attention to line number one and three. They are opposite of each other because we have a not in front. What that means is that we end up in a contradiction because we can eliminate not line numbers one and three, but three and one doesn't really matter. Yeah, no errors found so far. And now we pay close attention. From line number two, we reached line number four. P, something happened, we end up with a contradiction. So now we can apply the not introduction rule. So we end up with a not P, thanks to the not introduction rule, line numbers two through four. Okay, what is the next thing we wanted to do? So look here, if P is assumed to be true, not P is false. That, that's really what we are actually after. We are not done with the proof yet. As you can see, no errors found, but you have not reached the conclusion. Why don't I go ahead and introduce a P here using the OR introduction rule. So I'm introducing an OR introduction rule to line number five. Okay, we have an interesting situation. Line number one and six are opposite of each other. So we can eliminate not and end up with a contradiction because of not elimination, line numbers six and one. No errors found so far. Okay, this is good. What can we say now from line number one through seven? We started somewhere, we end up with contradiction. That means we can introduce not introduction rule, similar to what we have done at line number five. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we are going to say this is same as not of not because line number one has some expression. It, it led us to a contradiction. That means we can introduce a not to line number one line number one. So not introduced at line number one through line number seven. Check proof. Oh, I made a mistake. Sites are unavailable support for the proof. Oh, okay. It's a parent of this. Now it should work. I didn't complete the box properly. Okay, good. We are not still there. We have to apply one more rule. This double knot. We can eliminate double knot using DNE rule, double knot elimination rule to line number eight. Let's see whether we are done. Yeah, congratulations, proof is correct. 